to give you for sure were the ones that broke my the, the straw that broke the camel's back, as they say. Um, which was number one was the story of David, or Dawood alayhi salam. Beautiful story of David and Goliath in the Bible. How many of you young men know the story of Dawood wa Jalut? If all of you don't know it, that's homework. Your parents better ask you if you don't know the story of Dawood wa Jalut by tomorrow this time, and then they should, they should have your head, man. Story of David and Goliath is very beautiful from Islam and in the Quran, but in the Bible it's even beautiful. The, the dialogue that takes place between David and Goliath in the Bible is, is something uh, astounding. But there's a parallel story about David in the Bible that's not prestigious whatsoever. And it's the story of David and a woman named Beth Sheba. Beth Sheba. And the story of David and Beth Sheba is that Beth Sheba was one of the most beautiful women of her time. She was gorgeous. And David saw her sunbathing one day or on her porch or what have you. And he decided that this woman was so beautiful, <clears throat> he had to have her. So he slept with her. The only problem with this is she's married. And she's married to one of the commanders of his army. One of his close comrades, his close companions, his friends. Named Uriah. And so David becomes remorseful for what he's done. He feels bad about what he's done. And instead of repenting, you know, he's actually, he, and he's just committed adultery, that is guilty of um, death, according to his own law, it's a sin guilty of death. Instead of repenting and all of this and that, being sorry for what he's done, he decides to fix the problem. And the way he fixes the problem is he sends a letter to his army, saying, because they were fighting uh, the people in Philistine at this time, the, you know, the children of Israel were always at war for this land called Philistine. Um, and he sends the letter to his army saying that when the battle becomes fierce, everyone abandon Uriah. Abandon Uriah and leave him by himself so that he is destroyed. And they do this and Uriah is killed. And therefore David is now able to have Bathsheba all he wants and no one can say anything about it. This is David of the Old Testament. Salam, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free him from the attribution that they give him. But, and, and, and even worse than this was the story of Solomon. Even though all of that's bad. You would, I mean, that's, that's, that's bad. That's about as bad as it gets. The story of Solomon, Suleiman alayhi salam in the Bible, is that Suleiman was one of the greatest kings of Israel. He built the temple. He built the temple mount. He's one of the ones that began the construction of the temple mount. And this is actually what the Jews think that they're trying to rebuild that's going to bring about their, their false messiah. Their Dajjal is going to come. Um, that's why they are presently digging under Mashal Aqsa. They think they are looking, for, they, they say they're looking for the Ark of the Covenant, which was once in the temple, uh, which contained, you know, the, the law of Moses, the, 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 the part of the tablets that Moses was given to their understanding and the staff and all of this. But this is their excuse for trying to route Mashal Aqsa from underneath. Um, he was one of the great kings of Israel. But in the Bible, Solomon ha had a falling back. He fell back from his faith, and the Bible describes it that, that Solomon um, committed idolatry. He worshipped idols at one point in his life. He fell back, and he committed shirk, the unforgivable sin. So now you have prophets in the Bible who are alcoholics, who commit incest with their daughters, who commit adultery, murder, and idolatry, shirk. So this is a big problem for me, because these cannot be prophets. There has to be some problem here. Either, either these are not prophets, either these stories are wrong, or the worst case scenario, Billah, my understanding at the time, was that God did not know how to pick His prophets, apparently. So I had a, I had a problem of understanding. Um, and not only are these people not prophets anymore, but these people have no credibility. They cannot show me how to re lead a righteous life when they are the worst of people. These are people you would see on the show, what is it, uh, Night Watch Crime? Here, here in the UK, Cops or, crim uh, Cops or Cameras, or America's Most Wanted in the States. John Walsh would be hunting for these people, man. Seriously. And if I saw them... I would run away from them 
or I would call the, the authorities on them. Not only that, but I would not even trust any of them alone with my children. I would not trust David alone to, to, to teach my son anything. And if Lot got near, he got even close to my daughter, I would put him in the hospital, most likely. If Lot got anywhere near my daughter, I'd probably hurt him. So these, these, these are not prophets to me anymore. There's something wrong with these stories. And this is where I began to ask a lot of the questions that led me to where I am now. And I was told, this is the, uh, this is the argument that you will get. And this was an understanding, this is an understanding that human beings are in, 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 in transiently imperfect. That, and, I, and we know this is a Muslim, we're not perfect, but our understanding of why we are not perfect is different. For the Christian, the reason why we are not perfect is because of Adam. Salam. Adam salam, connect, committed the first ever initial mis mistake or in their instance of sin. We know that it was a misjudgment according to Islam. That it was a misjudgment and it was already part of the divine plan anyway. Qadrullahi wa afila. But for the Christian ideology, this was the initial sin committed against God and, and, it, and it initiated the fall of, from grace. Because we know that Adam salam, was created in the, in the garden of Jannah and this is where he initially dwelt. But when he ate from the tree, this is when his fall from the favors that he had happened and he came here to this earth. According to the Christian ideology, this was the initiation of sin. This is how sin entered into the world and that through Adam, the rest of his progeny have inherited that sinful nature. And that, that sinful nature is born into each and every individual. This is why Catholics believe that if a baby is not uh, baptized, it goes into purgatory upon its death. If it dies without baptism, it goes into purgatory and then it's up to God's judgment of which way it will go. But it does have the possibility of going to hell if it's not baptized because it is born with this inherent sin nature that comes from Adam alayhi salam. And that this is the reason why the prophets were like this, because they wanted to show us how that even with that inherent sin nature, even though we are manifestly sinful, that God can take even the worst of sinners and use them for His edification, and use them as vessels and tools to bring about His understanding, that He could still use even the worst of people. To me, this would not work. And I'm going to tell you two reasons why it won't work. Because most of the time when I give reasons to Christians, I try to give two reasons. The first one, and this is actually 